yes. With season five of Yellowstone just over the horizon, it gives me great pleasure and a perfect excuse to talk about one of my favorite shows on television. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. There's no stopping this. But where to begin? We can pick apart the intricate yet digestible plot, or we can chat about the first-class vision executed by Taylor Sheridan and his team of directors. I could probably gab about how beautiful the cinematography is for hours. What I'm trying to say is, there's enough meat on this Yellowstone bone to make Lizzo feel full for at least five minutes. And believe me, that's a lot of meat. So rather than try and focus on the show as a whole, what I want to focus on is how great, competent writing of tightly constructed characters can make a show jump from good to legacy status. Yellowstone is a show made by adults for adults, demonstrating maturity over silliness. It exclaims, this is how it's done, before giving the drama genre a swift kick in the nuts. Yellowstone is another show that rightfully demands the heaps of praise it's been given within the middle of its run. Few shows can hold that standard as they continue to march towards their inevitable conclusion. Breaking Bad managed to keep it together, and before that, The Sopranos. But more often than not, when the heaps of praise comes in for a show mid-run, it tends to collapse on itself like a dying star, taking the eight seasons you wasted your time on and sucking it into a black hole of bullshit. You are my queen. No. And always. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! So enters Yellowstone, the newest show slotted as one of the greats. And so far, I have to say, it is. Largely due to its full command of character development, character motivation, and character background. The best way to describe Yellowstone is the Godfather set in Montana. Replace the Sicilian Mafia with cowboys, the rival clans with Indians and out-of-state invaders, and the Corleones with the Duttons. The trials and tribulations of the Dutton family dynamic is very much front and center compared to whatever outside forces that's trying to tear their ranch apart. But one thing's for sure, character matters to this show, and these characters are flawed. You have the father, John Dutton played by Kevin Costner, who loves his children very much. But the only way he can show his affection is through the Yellowstone Ranch, his rebellious son Casey, who wants nothing to do with his father or the ranch but realizes the importance of family and providing his half-Native American son a chance at a better future. There is Casey's wife, Monica, a Native American who's torn between two cultures and struggles to bridge that gap. She loves her husband, but hates the decadence and meaning that comes with being a Dutton. There is the lawyer brother, Jamie, who cares nothing about his family and only so much about the ranch if that means a chance at grabbing power for himself. The only daughter, Beth, who, whoa, well, who do we have here? Would you feast your eyes on her? Where was I? Oh, yes, the only daughter who couldn't care less if the ranch burned to the ground, as long as her father was happy. Hell, if she knew it would make him happy, she'd burn the place down herself. She could probably start the fire with her tongue. And then there's the adopted son, Rip, whose fierce loyalty to John Dutton is admirable and he shows zero signs of ambition outside of that allegiance. If he's told to sleep in the stables, he does. Shovel shit? Sure, on it. No questions asked. Blow that guy's brains out because he knows too much? Rip agrees with only a nod and never a question. He's a man comfy in his place, and yet not at the same time. He doesn't think he deserves to be working at the Yellowstone, let alone be as close to the Duttons as he is. I'm starting to see a pattern here. Yeah. I see it. Every character has a dual nature. Each one of the family has their turns fighting with themselves, just as they do each other, along with the outside forces attempting to take away what makes them so powerful. The Yellowstone Ranch. If you come from a close-knit family, chances more than not you recognized your loved ones in each one of these characters. It's sort of like My Big Fat Greek Wedding, but with 100% more cowboy hats and murder. The main antagonist, Chief Thomas Rainwater, has the same bilateral nature. At first, you get the sense that the chief here is all about his own power and using what has historically happened to his ancestry as a means to excuse his actions. But as you progress through the seasons, you come to understand that the chief really does care about his people 
and you start to respect him for it. When John Dutton and Thomas Rainwater come upon a mutual enemy, you respect these two polar opposites for who they really are, two powerful men protecting the well-being of their people. You cheer that they're able to team up together to defeat a common enemy. But when all their enemies are wiped away from Montana, so will their alliance. The best you can hope for is an unstoppable force meets an immovable object with these two. Much of the invasion comes from out-of-state real estate developers that look at Montana's breathtaking landscape and see it the only way they can. A tourist destination money-making machine. Worse even is in Season 3, where a tourist destination just isn't enough. They're going to attempt to build the city where the Yellowstone sits, morphing the small town atmosphere into a city-dwelling hellscape filled with cafe latte enemas and mumblings about how stretch marks are the biggest fear a woman can have. But it's the enemy within that proves to be more dangerous to these characters than any outsider can impose. And yes, I partly mean the Montana native Beck brothers, who managed to piss off both John Dutton and Thomas Rainwater to the point where becoming allies is more lucrative than being divided. But also within the Dutton family itself. Lawyer and giant asshat Jamie Dutton is the Fredo, the family idiot the Chris Cuomo of the Duttons, willing to do, say, and act out any part he can if it benefits his rise to the top. Everyone in the family sees him for who he is, a snake within the walls of Eden. No one sees this more than Beth, and with the slow reveal of how her relationship with Jamie devolved into an overwhelming sense of vengeance on her brother, you understand where she's coming from. This all comes to a head when, as young teens, Beth becomes pregnant with Rip's child. Scared, and with no one else to turn to, she looked to Jamie for help to get an abortion, but he doesn't take her to Planned Parenthood to kill the baby. He takes her to a reservation clinic, where the abortion is performed by giving Beth a total hysterectomy. To make the situation even more tragic and fucked up is when Jamie okayed the procedure without letting Beth know what exactly she was getting herself into. This right here is more than enough evidence against Jamie's character. Most of the time, he makes a decision based on what will benefit him, but sometimes, he makes a decision that anyone in their right mind would say is a stupendously idiotic one. One that hurts many people in the process. I can handle things! I'm smart! Not like everybody says! Like dumb! I'm smart! And this is where you understand why Beth, if given enough gasoline and matches, would set the whole world on fire. She seeks vengeance, not on Jamie, or the fact that her mother blamed her for the accident that ultimately killed her. No, she seeks vengeance on God himself for having been born. She drinks heavily, smokes a pack of cigarettes before noon, cusses like a sailor, and fights like a marine in Guadalcanal. I guess what I'm trying to say is, she's totally marriage material. She's a whirlwind of venom, violence, and vengeance. She wreaks havoc towards anything remotely posing a threat. Pray that you're on her good side. Because if not, well... Who the fuck are you? I'm the bitch about stabbing you in the stomach. She's daddy's girl through and through. And if Rip is John's black hat, then she's his pit bull. And man, she'll take a chunk out of your ass. She doesn't aim to kill. No, she looks to maim. Her enemy, no matter it being someone trying to take the ranch, or a saleswoman harassing Monica, will feel just an ounce of the pain she does every time she wakes up to find herself alive. And there's only two people she will allow to get close to her. One of them is Rip. The casting of Cole Hauser as Rip was almost as if the writers had him in mind when they were first fleshing out the character. It is rare that you see an actor tailor-made for a role he had to audition for. Hauser brings a dynamic rarely seen in film and TV shows today, the strong, silent type. Too many characters in TV shows and movies now seem like they can't shut the fuck up. Dialogue that seems to fill pages with a bunch of squawk, because the writers just love listening to themselves through their own characters. With Rip, one look and you understand his approval or disapproval. A small wag of his finger could mean big things. His stoic nature might mean violence. He's willing to do anything to protect the only father figure he has. And John doesn't take this lightly either. He truly cares for Rip as if he were his own. Hell, for all things considered, he cares more for Rip than he does Jamie, who you find out later are two sides to the very same coin. John is a man who is attempting to secure his children's future, making sure they, and future Dutton generations, carry on with what has been in the family for seven generations. But this generation of Dutton seem not to give two shits about the ranch, or each other in some cases. So what the hell is he really fighting for? 
He could just sell the ranch and secure his family's future for multiple generations to come. But he made a promise. A promise to his father to never sell the ranch. And he would rather fight and lose the Yellowstone than break his promise. He is a father. And fathers fight for their progeny. And he views everyone coming for a piece of his land as someone coming to take a piece of his children. He is a man. And if a man breaks his word, is not a man at all. Not many father figures are written like that in our modern myths and legends. Quick, think of a father figure who isn't dead or has completely abandoned his children in movies and TV shows in the last 10 years. Time's up, you can't. Taylor Sheridan and his entire writing crew have built something spectacular here. They've written well-defined characters who are rich and contradictory. It is a show about adults with adult problems and doing adult shit. A show that never looks down on any of its characters and for that, we managed to find some empathetic qualities to them. This writing team knows what subtext is and deploys it with precision. They understand their audience and never shoehorns in a message no one was asking for. Yellowstone is peak responsible storytelling and depicts the moral consequences that comes with certain decisions. So now Yellowstone has to live on with the heavy burden of being one of the best shows on television right now. Not an easy burden to bear especially when you get the feeling that there isn't too many seasons left for Yellowstone before it outstays its welcome. There's only so many times you can fight hordes of outsiders before the audience gets bored. So, to my hoping, as the series begins to wrap up here with the start of season five, let's trust that Tyler Sheridan's crew and cast will stick the landing, making the show one of the all-time greats, which it's poised to be, because Yellowstone, amongst a myriad of reasons, is a masterclass in competent character writing. And above all else, they are the few modern writing teams that seem to comprehend that a great foundation starts with a great script. I'm out of here.